Let's talk about one interesting feature of elasticity of demand as it relates to the total amount of revenue generated by a company. If you remember, revenue is just the price of a product times the quantity of that product that is actually sold. So we can look at what happens to revenue in response to a price increase in two different situations. One where we're facing inelastic demand and one where we're facing elastic demand. Inelastic demand is the case where our elasticity of demand is less than 1. If you recall, our elasticity of demand is just the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price, or the absolute value thereof. We say we have inelastic demand when that quantity is less than 1. Doing a little bit of math here, we see that we have inelastic demand when the percent change in quantity is smaller than the corresponding percent change in price. So for example, we would have inelastic demand if we increased the price of our product by 50% and only saw our sales drop off by 10%. Now, as we just said, our revenue is equal to our price times our quantity. So let's think about what happens to revenue in response to a change in price. Taking the example that I just described, say we had our price going up by 50%, but we had our quantity only going down by 10%. That was an example of this situation here with inelastic demand. Well, we can see in this situation that our old revenue is going to be smaller than our new revenue. More specifically, we can say that our old revenue was just some arbitrary price times quantity. Our new revenue, if our price increases by 50%, is 1.5 times the original price. And our new quantity, if our quantity decreases by 10%, is just 0.9 times the original quantity. And if we multiply this out, we end up with 1.35 times our old revenue. So what we see here is when we have inelastic demand, the change in quantity demanded is not enough to overcome that higher price, and the total revenue taken in goes up. So to summarize, inelastic demand, a price increase will lead to an increase in revenue. On the other hand, we see the opposite behavior when we're facing elastic demand. If you recall, elastic demand is the condition where our elasticity of demand is greater than 1, or where our percent change in quantity demanded divided by our percent change in price is greater than 1. Again, doing a little bit of math, we have elastic demand when the response in terms of percent change in quantity is greater than the percent change in price. So in this situation here, again, consider revenue. Elastic demand, for example, would be a situation where if we even raised our price by, let's say, 10%, we would see our quantity decrease by something greater than 10%. So maybe when our price goes up by 10%, our quantity demanded goes down by, oh, I don't know, let's say 30%. So now we can again think mathematically about what happens to revenue in response to an increase in price. Again, our revenue starts at some arbitrary price and quantity. And we say if our price goes up by 10%, this P becomes 1.1 times P. And if in response our quantity demanded goes down by 30%, then our Q becomes 0.7Q. If we multiply this out, we see that our new revenue is 0.77 times price times quantity. So we're multiplying the old revenue by something that's less than 1. So what we see here is that we get a decrease in revenue. So to summarize, when we have elastic demands, when we try to raise our price, the decrease in quantity demanded is going to more than compensate for the price increase, and we're going to see overall 
a decrease in revenue. So it's important to know what type of demand you face. If you face inelastic demand, you can raise your price and you'll actually be making more money. If you're facing elastic demand, when you try to raise your price, you're actually going to end up making less money. Now, I said before that when we're dealing with a straight line demand curve, whether our demand is inelastic or elastic depends on where on that curve we are. So you remember at the top here, at the higher prices, we were facing demand that was elastic. And as we moved down the demand curve, we went from an elastic region to an inelastic region. Let's consider here going from a price of zero and then increasing that price, or going this direction along our demand curve what we see that corresponds to what we just discussed is as we start increasing our price we're in a region where our demand is inelastic so in response to a price increase we should get a revenue increase so in this region here as we increase our price our revenue is going up then we hit this turnaround point here where now rather than facing inelastic demand we're facing elastic demand. If we continue to increase our price, what we're going to end up doing is decreasing our revenue. So let's think about what happens when we plot a graph of price versus total revenue. You get what you see here, where as you start increasing your price, for a while your revenue goes up. This corresponds to the inelastic part of the demand curve. But then you hit this unit elastic point here, which corresponds to this point here. And then if you keep trying to raise the price, you're going to see a decrease in revenue. So you'll generally, when you're facing straight line demand like this, you're going to see a revenue trajectory that looks something like this. One important thing to remember here is that while understanding the relationship between price changes and revenue changes is important and it's a very interesting feature of the elasticity calculation, when firms are deciding how much to produce and what price to charge, they're usually thinking about how to maximize profit, which is total revenue minus total cost, rather than purely thinking about how to maximize revenue.